Hello, my name is Arjan Timmerman, and today I'm here for Gestalt IT, and I'm talking with James from Pure Storage about AI Ops. James, can you please introduce yourself uh, a little, and um, we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having me, Arjan. Um, uh, so my name is James Gallegos. Um, I am at Pure Storage. I lead product marketing for our digital experience business unit, um, which is uh, in essence, uh, our Peer One AI Ops platform, um, along with our as a service um, offering, and that's through you know Cloud Block Store, Portworx, Flashblade, and Flashray. AI Ops. I think a lot of people will think, "What is AI Ops?" Can you explain a little bit what AI Ops means for Pure, at least, and maybe from an industry perspective? But um, lead the way. Sure. Yeah, I, I think I think that uh, the funny thing about AI ops right now, Ariane, is is I think it's it's becoming a really hot um, buzzword. You know, almost the almost the cloud of today <laughs> buzzword that we're going on. Um, but if if we want to just you know make it really basic, AI ops is really just the evolution of IT ops um, and IT operations. So when you when you think about AI ops, so you it's a very very broad. Um, coverage map of of what AI ops really is. So it, it's everything from you know full full stack AI and analytics to you know different parts of your of your infrastructure actually offering um, AI ML capabilities to be able to help uh, streamline and improve in, in some ways. You know making you know making it so you're you're you have better uptime, you have more efficiencies. You know you can plan more accordingly. Um, so for us, for peer storage, for, for really storage manufacturers, AI ops, what, what, where that comes in is, is in, in a few places. Um, the first one is something that I think that we've all done for, for quite some time, and that's, that's leveraging AI for some sort of proactive support. Um, and th like I said, this isn't new. This is something that I think storage and systems manufacturers have been doing for quite some time, um, leveraging telemetry data, um, creating things like fingerprints, and being able to reference those things to help avoid, hopefully, um, an outage for, for another customer um, at some point. Um, but what we're talking about today is now taking that AI capability, taking the, that AI engine, that ML engine, and elevating it to do different things. And so that, that's where it starts to get really, really exciting you know, today. So one of the first things we're doing is we're, we're taking our AI capability and we're leveraging it for... Um, what we're referring to is workload planning. And so now as a customer, if you need to add a new workload, whether it be you know, a SQL server, um, exchange database, file, object, you know, wh whatever it might be that you're adding, um, we have built into Pure One um, a planner um, that leverages all of our AI telemetry data to be able to help properly and accurately forecast what you're going to need. Um, and that... And when I say what you're going to need, it could be, you know, we, we need to scale. We need to grow our existing infrastructure footprint. Um, we need to potentially look at adding something from, a, from an infrastructure standpoint. Um, but despite what, whatever the, 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 the conclusion is, we'll be able to help tell the customer in a very, very accurate way what they're going to need to be able to, uh, to, to run this application uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the right way. So I hear a lot of, of, of analytics, helping the customer. Um, data and analytics is something, you already mentioned it with AI ops, but you're mentioning it right now with the customer as well. From that perspective, the analytics part of pure storage meta, if I'm correct, right? It's, yep. it's meta, yeah, meta, meta is our is our AI. Uh, yeah. So from that perspective, is that um, you're going into the telemetry of things now, but do you do more on the analytics side of, or, or is that really it for now? And, and will that come in, in, in the near future for analytics? No, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think that that's always just kind of continuing to improve. Um, we, we did something uh, fairly groundbreaking, you know, about five years ago, and that's, that's when we introduced this, this idea of creating proactive fingerprints um, that don't have to wait for a failure first. You know, most cases, this proactive analytics for support waits for something to break. 
and then they take the broken thing, they find, you know, other cases that are similar, and then they proactively reach out to those customers. Um, that's where we started as well. But what we added since then was, you know, taking taking all of this telemetry data, which there's so much, our, our, you know, of all of our fleet, our, you know, tens of thousands of flash arrays out there, all reporting in telemetry data, we have a lot of great intelligence to be able to kind of help um, from, uh, from a support standpoint. And then from analytics, we've introduced things that are seemingly simple, <laughs> like um, the load meter um, and load calculations. So this is telling you how, how busy your flash array or flash blade instance is um, and how much you can add to it. This might seem trivial, um, but I, having come from other storage manufacturers myself, you know, the legacy way of measuring how busy a, a flash array or storage array is, is how, how busy is the CPU? Um, flash arrays are much different, right? Flash arrays behave much, much differently. They take, they take full, uh, full benefit of, a, of a, an idle CPU and they use the threads for as many things as they can do. You know, because everybody's doing some sort of background processes um, or, or even data reduction um, and encryption type of capabilities. So we've introduced load, which is, uh, in essence, it, it measures um, an algorithm to, to, to determine, you know, how much more load the array can take given all of the bottlenecks that are present. And so we're continuously not only monitoring that, but being proactive with the customer on that. And that feeds directly into the workload planning capability as well. So if you have an existing footprint, you can now take that and essentially scrub it against uh, you know, all of the analytics and see, okay, what can I do? Can I add, can I add a SQL server to this um, you know, active flash array? Um, yes or no? And if, if no, what do I need to do? Um, so I, I, analytics just continue to get more rich. You know, we, like, like you said, though, we, we've been doing analytics for a very long time. It isn't necessarily the new thing we're adding, but I would say it's something that we're, we're can just continuing to, to become um, better at. Thanks. From a customer perspective, it is also important that um, they have the opportunity to hook into other, um, yeah, uh, products in the market as well, right? We've got vRealize, if you look from a VMware perspective, you've got other monitoring tools as well. Um, how does pure storage and pure meta hook into those kind of um yeah, products that are already in the market and already at the customer. Yeah, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a funny question because it's, it's such, a, it's such a unexpected question for me personally. So when, when I came over to Pure, to Pure One from the Flash Array um, organization, you know, one of the, one of the, I was really excited about AI ops. I was excited about everything we could do, and one of the first things we do, of course, is we go and, and we talk to analysts and we talk to customers and we, you know, we, we try, we get hints of what we can do to improve. And the, a completely unexpected response was, okay, yeah, your AI ops are great. So is everybody else's, you know, we're having, everybody has some sort of AI ops capability now, but they, be, they everybody's kind of in, especially our larger customers, larger enterprise customers are, are um, coming to, to an issue where, they are creating these AI ops islands that potentially are not compatible with one another even. So you might be getting a recommendation from one of your AI, op AI ops platforms that conflicts with another and that's real and that happens. So um, our approach is, yeah, Pure One is awesome. It's a great UI. In fact, we just won an A design award for, for, the, for the UX design. So we're super proud of that. But for a customer that may not use peer one for everything. How dare they, right? Um, you know, we, we, uh, we want to keep that in front of mind. So we, we've developed an, an API first um, engineering methodology in that everything that we, all of the analytics, all of the recommendations, everything that we're doing is going to also be available via, via API. So you can plug it in natively to, like you said, the, your, v, your VMware uh, monitoring product or, or stuff like even like, like, uh, like Splunk. Um, so we have a lot of, uh, a lot of capability to already do that today. Um, and we are, um, we are going to be working on stuff like a, like a reference architectures for various other um, plugins and products. So it's, it's much easier to just deploy the, the package of, of, uh, of what pure one AI ops has and then plug that into your tool. 
Amazing, thanks. So I think my last question um, will be uh, uh, in one, uh, and it's actually two. So we've got the pure annual event accelerate um, that's going on still, right? Am I correct? Yes, um, that's right. So mm -hmm. th that's one. And from that perspective, can you tell us a little bit more about what people should look into from, from that perspective, from an um, accelerate perspective, but also um, what is the future for Pure Meta, Pure One, and hooking everything together? Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's um, so to start off with accelerate. We, we did it a little different this year. I think everybody's been kind of experimenting on this virtual platform stuff to see, you know, what um, what's most effective, what gives what gives attendees, you know, the most flexibility to actually see what they want to see. Um, and and previously, you know, we we've been restricted to to a time frame, you know, very much associated with like the physical, like we have to be there in person. Um, and then even going into some of our first virtual events, we kind of felt like we were artificially constrained by the same things. Um, so this this accelerates different in that it's four it's a four week long process now. So uh, it's not every day for four weeks. It's a couple of days each week for four week, and e each week has a different uh, different theme and different kind of things you can you can hop in and take a look at. So so that's going all really really well. In fact, we're coming up on the last week here uh, this next week. So we're we're really excited with that. Um, by far more most attendance we've ever seen, uh, which you know for saying to to an se like myself um you know we have a four-week event let's see how many people we can go I'm like ah <laughs> you know that's a long event but i think what it did is it is it, it it provided a very flexible schedule so people couldn't attend what they want to see um and it accelerate where you know we we've announced some some super exciting things too um you know portworks a recent um acquisition by pure you know we uh with this announcement you're going to see that we're very much committing to that, uh, to integrating Portworks into not only our portfolio, but all of our tools. So um, Portworks is now officially integrated into Pier 1, into our AI ops uh, capabilities. So it is actually now gathering telemetry data from Portworks clusters um, and and doing all of that fun stuff. And keep your, you know, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, I think you should you should expect to see a lot of um, uh, a lot of development from us, a lot of innovation on the container side of the house, um, where uh, you know we, we've done such a good job on on the storage side. Now we want to kind of take that and we elevate it to to also the containers. Um, so that that's one thing. You know, Portworks being integrated integrated has been awesome, um, and we've also introduced some uh, some ransomware protection. Um, I think like like everybody else right now, right? Ransomware is such a hot topic in a in a and I guess and I guess a bad way <laughs> because people are are actually being affected by it right now. Um, so at Pure, we have a function for Flash Ray and Flash Blade called Safe Mode, um, and it's a Safe Mode snapshot. In essence, what it does is it makes it so a snapshot can't be modified or deleted for um, a determined amount of time. Um, thus, if there was a, a ransomware um, or any other sort of uh, data corruption or infection, you know, the customer will have a guaranteed um, place and time where they can roll back to. Um, and with ransomware being becoming more advanced and being able to even like delete snapshots and do a lot of those things by de by default how they're built, um, this is this is going to be really important. So. What we what we did in Pure One is every every Pure customer has the capability of going to an audit feature, and being able to just see how protected are my are, are my volumes, how protected is my data in my fleet, and it will tell you you know volume by volume, you know object store by object store, array by array, It'll comb the entire fleet at all times and and let you know where you're vulnerable, and if you do need to, uh, if you do notice that there's you know. Uh, a, a data set that does need to be protected within Pure One. You can also not only see that it'll let you know, um, but you can also do something, um, and it will allow you to to you know open a support ticket, get support to be able to reach out, kind of share best practices, help you enable it, and, and do all of that fun stuff. So, um, I, I would say those are probably two of our our uh, from our standpoint our our biggest things that we're you know we're going through. You know, we've also kind of just kind of continued to optimize, you know, stuff that we've already had. Um, you can now search for objects and VMs within our VM analytics um, 
uh, capability, which has been pretty cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to uh, close the call with? Um, the floor is yours. Uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, for every, for everybody that's, that's listening, you know, we, we're going to be having our accelerate sessions on demand. So feel free to, to hop over and, and, and check out anything that you want to see. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, all of all of the greatness is going to always be on our peer one dot peer storage dot com. Um, and you can also go to the peer storage dot com website and and check out all of our solutions and our product offerings and everything right there.